So this is just a quick uh, workflow tip for the Smart Vectors in Nuke uh, 11.2 and using the mat input uh, for them. So say we have the situation where we want to put something on this concrete block and this boy is going to run in front of it. So we know we're going to have to do a mat uh, for this in order to get a result. So the usual way is if we just go ahead and plug it directly in, we can see what we're going to have to uh, deal with. He's going to be dragging that burn mark along with him for the ride. And this is going to completely depend on the situation of what's happening in the plate, but I think you can use this as a general sort of uh, workflow uh, when explaining the smart vector matting. So here's the idea is, okay, we know that he's going to cross it. We need to create a mat for it. So your first instinct is, okay, let's create a mat for it. We go ahead and we begin to draw out uh, the area that we want the smart vectors to not take into consideration uh, when generating the vectors. So we draw out a mat, and hopefully better than this, but we get the idea. And then uh, we're going to be using this as our mat input. Now, here's the thing is if we really look at what we're matting out, remember we want pixels to not be taken into consideration for the generation of the vectors. Let's jump over to what we're actually masking. So if I look into the smart vectors, so now I've matted this area. I, want, I don't want this to be taken into consideration, but if you see here, uh, because we're creating these vectors, it's analyzing all the pixels. We're having this overspill of pixels that are, don't line up necessarily with our roto. Uh, it's taking multiple frames of consideration. There's all kinds of things happening here. So the problem with this is I'm not really truly matting the area to help my situation. I'm, I'm actually doing it within. But let's plug it in and see the results. So we plug it into our mat input of our smart vectors. And our mat channel is the mat alpha. Actually, turn off this for a second. And this is the initial result that we get. So, okay, so we've done better in this situation. It's not going to still help us to keep that in place. We'll still get the pulling along. And then you can see over here. So there is that handy in paint mat region, which is amazing. Uh, that will help take things further. And it does. But we're still going to get some pulling because of this gradient uh, in between. We can crank this up as much as possible, uh, but we're not going to get exactly what we want. So the best way to approach a situation like this, let's just jump to our RGBA, is to draw a much looser uh, roto. So let's collapse this. So in this case, we draw a much looser roto around the area that we want to be masking is where we're going to end up getting the best results. So we have something that's uh, much looser for the area that he crosses, and we're going to use this as the input. So now let's look at the difference. If we look at the smart vector input, we jump over to... Uh, the actual vectors themselves. So this is the area we want to uh, begin to mask. So now we plug in our mat and let's change that to source mat alpha. And then now, well, like right away, <laughs> it's completely different because we have such a large area. So we're just getting this filled in in, in a much, much better uh, way. This is actually without it. Let's turn that off for a second. This is without the in paint mat region. So we still have this little bit of uh, red that we are going to have to get rid of because this is enough strength to cause it to pull a little bit. We want it to be locked completely on that piece of concrete. So we turn on the in paint mat region. We get it cleaned up. It's still a little bit more. So that's okay. We just crank this up uh, even further. And now, boom, it's nice and clean. So what a smooth result uh, afterwards. Uh, we've completely gotten rid of any pixels uh, around that area. So in this case, we've actually, uh, we'll be able to have it locked on uh, directly on there uh, as he runs by because we've created a wide uh, mat or wide roto for that to take into consideration when we're generating those smart vectors. So we'll see him cross here. And then they stick right onto the wall. So just something to be aware of is always be very uh, conscious of what's happening in the smart vector channel uh, and not just the RGB when you're creating the actual mat itself.